Hi everyone, we're back on the island of Oahu in mid-February after spending the previous week in Molokai. Check out our other two videos on Hawaii if you haven't seen them yet. We'll put the links here in the description. We stayed in the heart of it all in Waikiki, a beautiful stretch of beaches lined with hotels and shops. This portion of the trip was for four nights before we headed back home. We decided not to rent a car here, so this guide will be about what we did that's mostly within walking distance. While we've walked the entire strip many times, we hadn't seen Waikiki Beach from the air, so this bird's eye view was nice to see all the familiar landmarks. We found a great deal at the Waikiki Beachcomber, which is just steps from the beach and the center of activity. It's bustling, but it's not insane as people seem pretty relaxed. There's some quieter beach spots that you can find. Just walk further east or west and the crowd thins out just a little bit, at least when we were there. October is probably the quietest month to visit. This is February and it's actually less busy than August when families descend to get their summer vacations in before school starts. Regardless of which month you decide to go, you'll find lots to do without leaving the Waikiki area. Somehow we always find ourselves coming back to Waikiki and there's always something we hadn't done before. Waikiki has so many food options that are budget friendly. Every time we visit, there's something new to try. These are some of our favorites, all within walking distance of our hotel. A classic is Liliha Bakery, now with a location right in Waikiki. The original location is fun to visit if you've got a car. They're known for their cream puffs. We ate them almost daily. They have lots of other desserts and a restaurant on site, but we didn't eat here this time around. Marukami Udon is another popular destination if you're looking for a good bowl of udon or ramen noodles. It's cafeteria style, so you order first and then you find a seat. You'll always find a long lineup at lunch and dinner times, but it moves relatively quickly. Visit at other times and you won't have to wait at all. Sticks Asia Food Hall is relatively new and reminds us of the old food hall that's now closed in the Alamoana Center. It's loosely themed after food markets found in Asia. There are so many choices here, you can't go wrong with any of the places. There's sit down at each or take out.
For fresh sushi, we liked Maguro Brothers. The original location in Chinatown is tucked away in the Mauna Kea Market food court. We walked in circles trying to find it, but it's fun to explore. If you don't want to venture over to Chinatown, there's a new takeout location not far from the Asia Food Hall. A new favorite of ours is Paya Fish Market, an outpost of the original restaurant on Maui. Don't worry about the wait. You line up to place your order and then grab a table after. They seem to have a system that works and the tables turn over quickly. It's also very reasonably priced. The fish was so incredibly fresh and perfectly cooked. I highly recommend the Mahi Mahi. Servings are generous, but I managed to eat my entire plate. It was that good. Hawaii is also famous for its musubi, which are like little handheld bites filled with spam and other varieties. You can find it everywhere, even in the ABC stores. Henry's Place Ice Cream Shop is full of tropical fruit flavored ice creams and sorbets. The cup may not look very big, but it's more than enough for Dave and I to share. I like the pog, which is pineapple, orange, and guava. Steak Shack, located beachside on the Waikiki Shore Hotel, always has a lineup, but it's worth it, and it moves fast. But don't upsize and order the 10-ounce beef. You pay a lot more for two extra pieces of meat. I like the terry chicken, personally. That's 10-ounce? If you're looking for groceries and quick food options, check out the relatively new Waikiki Market. It's right in the hotel area, so you don't need to hike out and find groceries anymore. Their prices are also reasonable with a great selection. We didn't try the prepared food, but it looked pretty good. No Hawaiian grocery store would be complete without fresh pokey on the menu. Leonard's is the home of the Malasada, which are Hawaiian-style Portuguese donuts. It's outside of Waikiki, about a 30-minute walk from the hotel area, but most people drive. There's a lineup here too, but I promise you it moves quickly. There's nothing like scarfing down piping hot donuts in the parking lot. We finally made it to Ethel's Grill, and let me tell you, it is worth it. We did have to take an Uber to get there as it's not walking distance. We heard there's always a crowd, but when we got there around 11 a.m., we were the only ones. It's so good. We ate the mochiko chicken and tataki sashimi. Even the salad dressing is homemade. The late Anthony Bourdain noshed here, so it was kind of sad to see his photo inside. We were on the hunt for mochi, and not far is Nishoto, which sells mochi in a little shop located in an industrial strip. It's hard to find. There's no signage from the street. Is it worth it? For sure. There's soft, bite-sized treats and tropical flavors. Fujiya is another mochi specialty shop, and theirs is a little pricier, but it's an incredible melt-in-your-mouth mochi that is out of this world. You could walk to this one from Waikiki, so that's an option. A short hop away from Fujiya is the famous Waiola Shave Ice that was originally a grocery store since 1940. There is a specific way of ordering your shave ice, so be warned. Not bad, but not the greatest in our opinion. For that, you'll have to drive to Uncle Clay, House of Pure Aloha. No one makes syrup like theirs, from real fruit. On our previous trip, we discovered Cam Bakery, home of the Poi Donut, located near the airport and Ethel's. Their coconut-filled Poi buns are something special. There's a lot of restaurants in the strip mall that it's located in, but we were kind of full after eating at Ethel's. Waikiki has lots of festivals. 
The Lunar New Year Dragon Festival was happening when we got there and it was fun to see the shops decorated in celebration of the New Year. The monthly street festival is also a lot of fun. Basically, food stalls lining a long stretch of the main strip on Waikiki Beach. It's close to traffic from early afternoon till late at night, so be sure to get your car back to your hotel if you're renting. We tried a lot of food, but the best was Dave's Lechon, a Filipino roast pork that's garlicky, crunchy, and juicy all in one bite. Waikiki at night does not let up either. It really comes alive as people head out for dinner after a day of sightseeing. It's great to even just walk around and soak in the atmosphere. We found some free luau entertainment at the International Marketplace. It's a great view from the top floor looking down without having to pay. On Friday nights, head over to the beach and look towards the Hilton Hawaiian Village for the weekly fireworks show. It's been a staple every Friday night since 1988. Check the time in advance. It's normally around 7.45 p.m. I don't know why we thought it was later and missed most of it this year. This video was taken by my sister who's there right now. Waikiki seems to have a little bit of everything for everyone. It's one of those few places we love despite the crowds, as there seems to be a chill vibe in the air and everyone's in a friendly mood it seems. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to like and subscribe. We would be so grateful. Now for the budget. For this portion, we spent $1,600 US for two people, not including food. We didn't rent a car during this portion of the trip as we had a car in our first week here when we stayed in North Shore. For the full 19 days in Hawaii, including Molokai and North Shore, we spent just over 4,300 US dollars for two people. We made use of a free flight pass as well and shared some accommodations and rentals with another couple, so that certainly helped. We found an incredible deal on Expedia for our hotel. Even the check-in staff commented that they had never seen such a low rate before. We loved this hotel because it was so central. It was newly renovated and the staff were incredibly friendly. Booking ahead is going to save you the most as prices go up closer to your travel time, not down it seems these days. There's a great coffee bar on the main floor and a cute little pool area. The Maui Brewing Company is also located here. Another cafe gallery is located on the street level and turns into a hopping bar at night with live entertainment.
We hope you get the chance to visit Hawaii. It is truly a special place in our hearts. Thank you for watching.